So in this bridge, which is 660 feet long, there are several cables that are holding the deck. We just want to focus on the connection of the deck and the cables that are holding that bridge. In this connection, there is a gusset plate used for connecting the cables to the bottom beams in the deck. We also identify two bolts here, which are huge. Also, we see some cable connectors that are used for connecting the cable to the gusset plate through the bolts. Given these numbers, like assuming the width of this gusset plate, the thickness, the diameter of the bolt, and some other properties are provided, how can we design this component using the concept that we have learned, including the normal stress, shear stress, and the factor of safety in the design? So in order to solve this problem, we need to visualize how this bridge or how this connection is going to break and then calculate stress for each of those cases individually and see what would be the force that is required for that failure to happen. So I'm going to look into the bolts, also the plate that is used for connecting the bolt to the bottom part and also the cable connector that are shown here. To help you visualize that, I prepared some animations that we're going to go through them one by one. First, let's look into the shearing failure in the bolts. So this is the connection that we have, and then I'm gonna turn that into a 3D model. So this is a 3D model that represents that connection, and the shearing failure is this type of failure where the bolts are shearing. And in that case, we need to identify what is the area where the bolts are failing. And if I zoom into the connection, we can identify two circular areas where the bolts are shearing. We do have two other circles on the other side. So in total, the area is going to be four multiplied by area of the bolt. The force, which is upward, is going to be parallel to the cross-section area that is shown here. So this is going to produce shear stress. Shear stress, which is force divided by area, has to be smaller than the allowable stress. And allowable stress itself is the yield stress divided by the factor of safety. As we saw in the animation, we have two bolts, and each bolt is going to shear on two planes multiplied by area of one circle, which is pi diameter squared over four. So the area could be calculated, and I plug that into the design equation so we can solve this for force. So this equation gives us the force that causes shearing failure in the bolts. Now let's move on to the other types of failure that could happen. The other part of the structure that I want to focus on would be the gusset plate. We want to see how that force is going to be transferred through the gusset plate and what kind of failure could happen in that case. I'm going to get rid of those extra elements on the side just for simplicity. So you can see I just take them out and I assume that they are not going to take any force. The type of failure would be like this. We have already learned uh, if the gusset plate is subjected to an axial force, it is going to break at its weakest point, which is the cross-section area where the holes are located, which we call the net cross-section area. So in order to calculate the stress, first of all, this is obvious that this is going to be a normal stress because force is perpendicular to the cross-section area of the gusset plate. In order to calculate the area, let me show you the dimensions. The width of the plate is given to be W, the thickness of the gusset plate is given to be T sub G, and the diameter of each hole or bolt is going to be D sub B. In order to calculate the net cross-section area, we are going to calculate the total cross-section area, which is W multiplied by the thickness, and then subtract the holes. In this case, the area of one hole is diameter of the bolt multiplied by the thickness of the plate, and because there are two bolts, I'm going to multiply that by two. Normal stress, which is force divided by area, has to be smaller than the allowable stress. Because we have several normal stresses, to distinguish between them, for this one I used sigma sub g, and g stands for the gusset plate. An area, as we discussed, is going to be the total cross-section area minus the area of the holes, which is n multiplied by d multiplied by thickness. I'm going to plug in the values and calculate the area in this case. We are going to plug in the values into the design equation and solve it for F. And this is the force that is causing failure on the net cross-section area in the gusset plate. There is another type of failure in the gusset plate. And again, remember 
the discussion that we had at the beginning of this course in terms of different types of stresses. We have another type of stress where it happens where two different elements are in touch with each other. And we call that as bearing stress. So in this case, the bolt are in touch with the gusset plate. And in the contact area, which is a half circle, there will be a contact stress or bearing stress. We have learned that that stress is non-uniform on the cross-section area, and it's difficult to calculate that. So we simplify that by assuming that that stress is uniformly distributed on a section like this. And that, instead of considering the half circle area, we are going to consider the projected rectangular section. The force is going to be distributed on the projected rectangular area. And because there are two bolts, there will be two contact areas. All right, let's write down the design equation. The bearing stress in the gusset plate, which is shown by sigma sub GB, is a force divided by area. And that has to be smaller than the allowable stress, which is yield stress divided by the factor of safety. Area is the important part of this problem. We can see here that the rectangle has the thickness of T sub G and the width of diameter B, D sub B. And because there are two bolts, I'm going to multiply that by two. Plug in the values and we can determine the area. After that, we plug that back into the design equation and solve it for force and we get another force that would cause breaking in the contact area between the bolt and the plate. Okay, so we have already talked about the bolts and we have talked about the gusset plate. But also, the connector, the blue element here, may fail. So let's focus on that part and see how what kind of failure may happen on that element. Um, in general, this connector is complicated because it would have variable thickness and shape and the force is going to be concentrated on some part of that. So in the real world design, if we want to design the connectors, we have to model them and calculate the exact amount of stress at different locations, which requires some computer software to do the calculation. But here we just want to review the basic concepts. So I'm going to make some simplification. And I'm just going to assume that the breaking happens where the bolt is connecting to that blue connector. So in this case, failure, as we said, is going to happen on the blue connector. And the area at which the failure happens is shown here in red. So we need to calculate that area. And stress is obviously normal stress because the force is perpendicular to the cross-section area. Let's calculate the area for one of these connectors. I'm going to consider this bigger rectangle with the width of uh, D, which is the external diameter of the connector, multiplied by the thickness of the connector, and then subtract the area of the hole, which would have the width of D sub B and the thickness of T sub C. Plug in the values and calculate the area for one connector. And in this case, there are four connectors. So the total area is going to be four multiplied by area of one connector. And the rest is super easy. We'll just plug that into the design equation, which is force divided by area smaller than the allowable stress, and solve it for force. In this case, the force that would cause failure in the connector is 556.8 kips. Okay, one more stress to calculate. What is that? the bearing stress in the connector, because this bolt is also sitting on that connector. So that also may cause a failure. Similar to the previous problem, like this one that we discussed, the area is going to be the same, but instead of considering that stress on the gusset plate, we are considering stress on the blue connector. All right, we are going to detect what is the area. Area is going to be the number of bolts, which is two, because we have two on each side. I'm going to multiply that by another two, so the total connectors would be four, multiplied by the diameter of the bolt, multiplied by the thickness of the connector. This is going to be the bearing area. Once that is determined, we are going to plug that into the design equation and then solve it for force, which in this case is going to be 417.6 kips. All right. Let's wrap it up. Let's review that. We have calculated five different forces. The first one, 
was the force that was causing failure in the bolt due to shear. Second one and the third one were the forces that would cause failure in the gusset plates. The fourth and the fifth one are the, the forces that are causing failure in the connector, the blue element here. What is the final answer of this problem? How much would be the maximum force that this connection can take? The entire system should resist the force. So even if just one part of that fails, the entire system would fail. We need to ensure that when we design a structure, all components should take the load. If we want to calculate the amount of maximum allowable force that the connection can take, we need to consider the minimum of these five values, as you suggested. And in this particular case, it is going to be 275.6, which is the force that bolts can take in this connection.